uh, like to thank everybody uh, for taking time out of your schedules to uh, join us this afternoon um, for our uh, application uh, training seminar here. Uh, we are going to cover uh, some of the places that uh, are typically found for using a uh, regenerative turbine pump. Um, I have uh, our regional uh, sales manager for the southeast uh, corner of the United States with us today, um, Bob Weller. He's going to be helping me uh, as needed. And uh, I also have Maria, our uh, Mexican sales rep, with us uh, as well. Um, so uh, if anybody has uh, any questions, if I can't answer them, I'm sure um, one of those two can. Um, and with that, uh, we'll go ahead and get started here. Um, my name is uh, Scott Carlson. Um, I've been with MTH uh, since 1999. Uh, I will have uh, 23 years this July. Um, and uh, a little bit about the company. Uh, MTH Pumps has been in operation since 1965. Uh, we are second generation owned, uh, family owned business. It was uh, founded by Dave Tremaine. Uh, it is now uh, operated and owned by his son, Tim Tremaine. And uh, Dave Tremaine is still very active with the company. He's 90 years old and he comes in and he works as an engineer uh, designing um, new products for us as, uh, as needed and helps uh, uh, consulting with uh, uh, consulting with uh, old, uh, a lot of our products, um, so he remains very active. While uh, his son Tim, the president of the company, is uh, uh, actively helping us grow um, constantly year over year. Uh, right now, we're at about 75 employees, um, and uh, we have just about every square foot of this building uh, completely filled up with uh, machinery and inventory uh, to the point that um, last year we purchased a 160 acre plot of land just south of town here in Plano, Illinois uh, to build a completely new facility. So hopefully we will start construction uh, within the next uh, year or two uh, for our new facility. So we're looking forward to that. Uh, all of our products, uh, all of our pumps are made uh, right here in Plano, Illinois. Um, you know, we are ISO certified uh, since 2012. Uh, right now we're ISO 9001 certified, uh, working towards the achievement of ISO 14000. Uh, which has very uh, many of the same uh, many of the same um, properties as the 9000, except that it also adds uh, environmental sustainability as well as social responsibility uh, and a few other um, a few other qualities that um, we're looking forward to uh, take on along with our standards that we've already had. Uh, for many years now. Um, so when I had mentioned we take up about six square blocks of Plano, Illinois right now, uh, we also own our own foundry as well as our own pattern shop. Uh, our foundry was just recently outfitted to be able to handle uh, small run investment casts which is uh, a rare quality in a foundry in the United States. There's only about a half dozen of them that can do that. A uh, typical foundry that does investment casting usually has to take large runs of uh, several hundred pieces at a time where we have a quick dry method that can handle just a uh, couple pieces at a time, uh, therefore allowing us to uh, custom make our own castings as we see fit and make small pieces uh, to keep our inventory available as needed. Uh, so uh, it's very handy to own our own foundry. So we're pretty proud of that. 
a um, little bit of a uh, couple pictures of our facility. Uh, like I said, we take up uh, quite a bit of real estate in the city of Plano, um, including full sales office uh, with two, with an application engineer. So if you ever get stuck in a situation where you can't quite figure out how to uh, properly pump uh, fluid, uh, we do have an application engineer and a full engineering staff to help you select your pump uh, uh, as required. Uh, we also have a full um, R&D facility uh, to be able to research uh, whatever is needed uh, for pumping solutions uh, that uh, may, may arise, uh, including uh, we have our own NPSH testing area that can NPSH test uh, boiling water up to uh, 30 feet in our own uh, uh, testing cylinders, uh, which is something that not a lot of other pump companies can do. Um, we do have, like I said, a lot of uh, state-of-the-art CNC machinery, including um, machinery that runs 24-7 on uh, robot-fed arms um, that are doing uh, constant feeding of the machines with the castings. Um, we do have our own tool room. Uh, we have our own welding um, machinery for doing our hermetically sealed pumps. Um, we keep millions of dollars of inventory in our warehouse at all times uh, with quite a bit of a safety stock of most of our standard products uh, so that we can uh, typically be able to bring our average standard product a two-week lead time. Uh, when a customer needs a pump, uh, standard lead time is approximately two weeks for most of our products. Uh, we also have an expedite program. If a customer needs a pump in an emergency situation, uh, a lot of times, if it's a standard product, we can be able to take the order, get it through the shop, and uh, have it uh, built and tested and shipped within 24 hours. Um, so we do have that program available as well. Uh, every single pump is uh, custom built uh, as ordered with the whatever materials of construction and tested before it leaves, this, leaves the facility. Uh, every pump 100% tested before it leaves. Um, we are uh, like I said, ISO 9000 certified right now, working towards our ISO uh, 14001, hopefully uh, by the end of this year. Um, we are uh, deeply involved with a lot of our uh, associations, the uh, Illinois Manufacturers Association and uh, several other associations to uh, keep us on the straight and narrow and we do uh, have a lot of involvement with uh, several uh, trade shows uh, that are in our uh, expertise. Uh, our in-house capabilities, like I had mentioned, we have uh, uh, our own full R&D facility that does uh, everything from NPSH testing to our own uh, DAF testing and several other uh, different types of testing capabilities that we have. Um, we have uh, full 3D modeling and prototyping abilities, including machining and computer design and fabrication. Um, and we have our foundry that is now doing the uh, investment casting as well. Um, a little bit about uh, regenerative turbine pumps. Uh, for those of you not familiar, one of the main characteristics of a regenerative turbine pump is high pressure with moderate to low flows. Uh, when we say moderate to low flows, our typical um, flows are about a half a gallon a minute uh, up to no more than about 150 gallons a minute. And our typical pressures are usually somewhere around uh, 
a hundred feet ahead, uh, about um, uh, 20 to 30 PSI, uh, all the way up to a thousand PSI uh, is about the highest we can get. Um, if you look at our curves, you notice that they are generally pretty steep. Um, we'll look at one of our curves up a little bit closer. This is uh, one of our typical four-stage uh, pumps with a uh, centrifugal pump. When you uh, add stages, uh, you uh, add pressure. It's uh, pretty much the same with a regen turbine. When you add stages, you add pressure, um, except that when you add pressure with a regen turbine, you're not adding any of the flow. You're just adding more pressure. Uh, so the uh, flow doesn't increase, only the pressure. Um, the significance of that is that with a centrifugal pump, as the um, flow increases, the horsepower increases, and it's exactly the opposite with a regenerative turbine. As the uh, pressure increases, the horsepower increases. So that's uh, backwards from a centrifugal pump. Um, so here you see uh, the horsepower gets higher as the flow gets higher, where in a regen turbine, the horsepower gets higher as the pressure increases. So it's uh, backwards. Uh, some of the other turbine qualities besides the high pressure are that they're typically a more compact design. Um, they're usually a simpler more simple construction uh, because they usually only consist of about uh, three parts. That's a casing, a motor bracket, an impeller, and then whatever the drive is for it. Um, or if you have a multi-stage, there's usually a couple of rings involved. Uh, they are pulsation free because all of the work uh, for the impeller is done uh, with uh, with the with uh, on the periphery of the impeller and it is balanced um, on the, with that high pressure usually um, if you if you're looking at high pressure when you look at like a piston pump you do get pulsation you don't get that with a regenerative turbine uh, because it is a rotating impeller uh, and because all of the work is being done on the periphery of the impeller uh, there is a little to no cavitation. Um, and there is good NPSH uh, because you're not having that cavitation. Um, so uh, let me show you an example of how a regenerative turbine works, and I'll use a couple of different comparisons here. Uh, so here you've got a regenerative turbine pump versus a centrifugal pump, and I can actually show you this a little bit uh, better. Um, I actually have a couple of samples here. So this is a typical uh, centrifugal pump. This is one of our designs. This is a DC-10. Uh, it's actually a 12-volt model, but it has a typical um, centrifugal pump impeller. It's actually an open face design, so you can see the face, but it's a cutaway. So you're familiar most of you are familiar with how a uh, centrifugal or pump works in that the fluid will come in to the center and as the pump is rotating, the water is flung across the impeller vane to the outside of um, the impeller and then it is uh, forced along the, um, the water channel and forced out the uh, uh, discharge of the pump. So as the impeller rotates, it only gets one pass. Um, so typically uh, you can achieve uh, fairly high amounts of uh, uh, flow with it, but you can't really get too much uh, pressure with it. Um, you can get more pressure as the impeller gets bigger, but um, or if you really want to get higher pressure with a centrifugal impeller, what you have to do is you have to add more impellers in front of it, making it a multi-stage impeller. Um, many of you are uh, familiar with 
uh, grunfots. This is how they make their uh, impellers is by uh, using multi-stage centrifugal. Uh, what we may what we manufacture is we manufacture a regenerative turbine impeller. This is a typical regenerative turbine impeller. This is actually off of one of our 150 series uh, impellers. And what we do is instead of introducing the water to the center of the impeller, we put all the vanes of the impeller on the outside of the impeller, and the water is introduced into the center of the edge of the impeller where it is split. And as it is split, as the impeller is rotating, it is worked over and over again. Um, and it is rotated or regenerated each time over and over again until it works its way around the entire impeller as it's, as it's being rotated. And then it hits what's called a water stop when it hits that water stop, it's been regenerated several times. It may be six times, it may be 10 times, it may be 12 times. There's a number that's uh, just the design of the impeller, uh, depends on what the impeller was designed to do. But when it hits that water stop, it's hitting a much higher pressure. And then it shoots out the discharge side at that high pressure without necessarily the high flow that the regenerative turbine pump would have produced. So you're hitting the um, high, you're hitting those high pressures without necessarily hitting those high flows. Uh, and um, what that does is that has allowed us uh, over the years to replace some of the uh, multi-stage centrifugal pumps. Um, we've been known to be able to replace up to a 15 stage centrifugal pump with just a single stage regenerative turbine pump. Uh, so we're pretty, uh, pretty proud of uh, being able to say that. So where you've got a uh, pump that is say um, four feet tall with a, with a motor and everything, uh, we've been able to replace it with one of our smaller pumps that was uh, slightly larger than the size of a football. Um, so when it comes to having needing to go into a um, cabinet, um, we can we can uh, uh, accommodate that a lot easier. Um, another example of a pump that uh, a pump style that we can replace uh, pretty easily is a. Uh, uh, rotary vein pump uh, with the sliding uh, veins. You have wear and tear um, to get that, that pressure. You also have pulsation. Uh, when you use a regenerative turbine in place of a rotary vein, uh, you don't get any of that. Uh, you get the balance of the impeller giving the smooth flow um, with the fewer parts that don't wear out. Um, uh, one of the brands that uses uh, this is uh, Procon, if you're familiar. Um, we can replace a lot of Procon uh, pumps with, uh, with, our, with our style pumps. Uh, it just depends on the uh, flow and pressure that you're looking for. Um, if you run into situations where uh, what you're currently pumping is at a higher temperature and you're experiencing cavitation. Uh, regenerative turbine pumps handle cavitation very well um, by themselves. Even at almost boiling water, uh, they can handle vapor uh, from that comes off of uh, the boiling water um, where we can handle even uh, uh, two to four feet of uh, or four, four to eight feet of NPSH with a regular uh, flex coupled turbine pump. Some of our close coupled turbine pumps by themselves um, can work uh, with even six inches to a foot of NPSH uh, without anything. If uh, you have a flex coupled pump and you need lower NPSH because you, it's a it's a larger application. Uh, we can add an inducer, uh, which is a centrifugal style impeller in front of 
the uh, the uh, multi-stage um, regen turbine, and that will lower the NPSH uh, capabilities of the regen turbine to be able to operate at uh, about two feet, uh, almost all the way uh, until uh, run out. In some instances with the 140s, it can operate as low as one foot um, without any cavitation or any losses in performance. Um, and that's usually just when you have hot water, um, which is where uh, mostly when you have um, boiler feed situations where you're preheating the water or recycling the water. Um, Next, we'll go through some of the applications that you'll find typically in uh, air heating and refrigeration uh, industry. Um, so uh, the first one, uh, very typical, is any kind of uh, boosting where you need to move uh, water up multiple levels in uh, any kind of building that has um, uh, multiple floors. Uh, regenerative turbines can do that very well because they don't uh, they don't need to produce the uh, high flows. They just need to produce the high uh, pressure to be able to boost that water up uh, the multiple levels. Um, with the car washes, a lot of car washes use piston pumps, and the inherent uh, issues with a piston pump is that there's a lot of moving parts that break down. Uh, as well as if uh, uh, the system that the car wash is using, particularly not the nozzles, have any kind of defect to them um, and they spray wrong, they could uh, danger the, the paint of the vehicles that they are washing and um, blow the paint right off the vehicles uh, with a regen turbine pump because they have... Uh, a uh, steep curve but not a straight up and down curve like a piston pump would have. Uh, there's not as much danger for that. Uh, they will hit a limitation where they won't uh, they won't cause any damage to a car wash should there be any other uh, part of the system that has malfunctioned. Um, so it's like it's a damage prevention uh, as well as with the piston pumps having multiple parts to them um, with the regen turbines having less parts, there's just less parts that can break. Uh, so a lot of times they will last longer. Um, one of the first applications of the regen turbine pump was the boiler feed uh, service. Uh, MTH pumps has been doing this for over 50 years. Uh, and in our time, we have figured out that if you can, if you get in a situation where you see uh, where you see a pump that you don't even recognize, because there have been a lot of pump companies that have come and gone, pump manufacturers that have come and gone over the last hundred years that uh, no longer exist. Um, that if you see a pump you don't recognize or you 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 need help crossing over a pump that you just can't get a hold of, if you can figure out the uh, boiler horsepower and the pressure that the system is running at, uh, we can help you match a MTH pump that will uh, that will work in that system, and we have that available right on our website. Um, so anytime. Uh, you run into boiler feed uh, service where you need a boiler feed pump. Uh, we have the charts available to be able to uh, match a pump that will work for that system. And that's available anytime on our website. Um, to accompany the boiler feed system, if you have a condensate return system, uh, particularly if you have one that's running on a uh, with a uh, square tank. A lot of those use a flange mounting. If you notice our flange mount that I have pictured here has a blank face to it. That's because we pre-program one of our CNC machines to cut those as ordered uh, to fit about 
I think it's about 16 different uh, faces, uh, including Dunham and Bush, uh, Shipco, Sterling, um, Aurora, uh, several other different uh, brands of uh, of faces. Um, so when you do order it, um, it only takes uh, an extra day in the process to uh, put it through a machine that will custom cut it to whatever the size is. So we would keep the inventory uh, of the the blank and be able to uh, and be able to cut it as ordered. Uh, we also, if you <clears throat> if you notice, we do have our centrifugals, our C series we've had for a number of years. Uh, we do make uh, flange adapters for those. Uh, those co only come in Shipco flanges at this time, uh, but uh, they we do have adapters for those as well. So uh, if you needed a centrifugal pump for your uh, condensate return system, we have those uh, too. Um, because of the compact um, nature of our regen turbines, being able to hit that high pressure with the low flows, a lot of chiller manufacturers and heat exchangers uh, like to use our pumps because they're small and they're quiet. Uh, so they put them in uh, their chillers, uh, and a lot of times they can keep them right in the same room running, uh, right next to the equipment that is uh, being used on the patients as the, uh, as the cooling equipment to regulate the temperature uh, within the one degree variant to be able to take uh, uh, the pictures that they are uh, that they're taking of whatever medical necessity necessities there are. Um, it was kind of an interesting fact that uh, during COVID when um, all the other uh, companies were getting shut down. Uh, we actually got uh, letters from some of our OEMs that were demanding us open. Uh, we didn't even have to produce any letters ourselves saying that we were open because um, because we uh, we were deemed essential because of the equipment we were making was getting used for medical uh, research and medical uh, uh, necessity. Um, moving on, um, another application to look for when you have uh, geothermal heating and cooling, uh, what you have is uh, hundreds of feet of piping that has twists and turns and elbows in it uh, throughout all of its piping. And what happens with uh, the circulation of the fluid that is in that piping is every time it takes on one of those twists and turns, it loses a little bit of pressure in the friction losses. And regenerative turbine pumps don't care about that because they uh, they can overcome that pressure with, uh, uh, with the high pressure that they produce. So uh, we are ideal for um, the geothermal heating and cooling. Uh, not only because we can overcome the, the pressures, but because the of the small footprint, they usually use a smaller motor, and a lot of times uh, the smaller motors are also run a little bit quieter, uh, so they're ideal for uh, buildings that have residents in them and uh, uh, commercial situations where uh, people would be able to hear it. So uh, something to consider when, uh, when you're looking at... Uh, uh, building construction areas is um, when you have a larger pump with a larger horsepower versus a regen turbine with a single impeller and a smaller horsepower. Um, a lot of times the smaller horsepower is also going to have less decibels to it. Uh, so the geothermal heating and cooling is I ideal for our, our pumps. Um, with the laser cooling, the EDM machines, and the plasma arc welders, they all work on the same principle that they use the high pressure that our pumps produce to send the cooling fluid through the head of the cutting tool to regulate that temperature so that when they start cutting that tool in the morning, it is the same temperature as when they finish cutting, that, cutting with that tool at the end of the day. What that does is when they are cutting a number of items out of 
a piece of metal or a circuit board that that cut is the same thickness all day long so they get consistent pieces all day long for whatever uh, equipment they are manufacturing. Uh, one of the other applications, another application is um, the fire system jockey service. Uh, another one that we have on our website is our um, jockey pump um, chart. If you have a uh, fire system that uses a uh, jockey pump, that is where the um, it's a pump that kicks on every uh, once in a while to maintain the pressure inside the system so that the sprinkler system doesn't ac accidentally set off the main pump. Um, we have a chart that will uh, help you select which pump is ideal for the system uh, using the main pump of the fire system versus the pressure that the system is held at. If you'll notice, there are not that many different models of MTH pump needed. It's because of that steep head curve that you can use uh, many of the same models to do a large range inside of that table. Um, if you just look at the chart here, you can see that even the top line here, the T41B uh, covers in the, the, if the main pump is 25 gallons a minute, it covers from uh, 50 PSI all the way up to 170 PSI will cover the jockey maintenance all the way up to that range. You can use the same pump for all that. I mean, if you do keep one on the shelf or if your building inspector uh, or your building maintenance person wants to keep one on the shelf, they only have to keep one pump. They don't have to keep several sizes for different parts of the building. Um, one of some of our more uh, scientifically calculated pumps are our CAN motor pumps. Uh, we have our X-Series pumps, which are uh, built for extremely clean situations. Uh, they actually use the fluid that is being pumped to go through the pump while it, through the motor while it is being pumped to help cool the motor and um, there is no mechanical seals involved while it's pumping. Uh, so they use these typically for uh, reverse osmosis, for extremely clean killers, uh, especially in clean rooms, and for fuel cell uh, for fuel cells. Um, one of our newer pumps, and uh, Bob will appreciate this one because this is a brand new product for us, and Bob is very heavy into this one is our new HP series. Uh, we actually just published uh, uh, an ad in Heating and Cooling uh, uh, magazine for it. It's, uh, it's a hermetically sealed uh, pump specifically designed for pumping freons and CO2. And the idea behind it is that in cooler temperatures, uh, where in especially in cooler climates, um, where you have uh, uh, temperatures that get cold at night or winter temperatures. Uh, when you have a grocery store or a data center or ice rinks or any other kind of places where you need something cold, you can use those outside temperatures accompanied with one of our pumps and a uh, heat exchanger of some type on the roof to bypass the compressor. Now the compressor could be like a 15 horse, 20 horse, whatever it is motor that is pumping that Freon to, to do its job in the refrigeration system. If you can turn that off to run our little three horse motor up to the roof to circulate this, you could be saving hundreds if not thousands of dollars in electricity every year. And uh, they're using these in the data centers for saving um, thousands, if not millions, of dollars in electric in electricity uh, for and saving the electricity, uh, as well as in the grocery stores um, by turning off the refrigerator refrigerators uh, when it's cold outside. 
So it's a newer newer technology, uh, and our pumps are right at the forefront of it. Um, did you have anything, uh, Bob, you wanted to add to that? No? Well, it took me a while to get my mic turned on. No, <laughs> the pumps uh, are using the ambient temperature outside. And as Scott pointed out, you turn off your compressors and so on, and uh, the savings in energy is tremendous when you get into a large uh, application like a data center or a large supermarket where you have a lot of freezers inside. Uh, and you're talking hundreds of thousands of dollars uh, in most cases, in some cases up into the millions of dollars per year in energy savings on one facility. So. Uh, these pumps have been, well, we started in this uh, in the early 2000s, uh, and they've been around for a long time. It's an extremely reliable pump. So if we get into the CO2, which is a different market, uh, something we're just now getting into, but it, I'm sure those of you listening out there know applications where they can be used in CO2. So that may be something you want to look into. Thank you, Scott. Sure. So anyway, uh, that's a newer product. Um, so in general, um, with uh, any place that has uh, any kind of uh, high pressure system that needs circulation, any closed loop system for which would be anything with heat recovery, uh, hydronic systems, uh, boiler feed systems, like uh, I had already shown you, um, any kind of chemical processes, anything in a closed loop system can use a regenerative turbine pump. So when you're out in the field and you're looking for places to stick regenerative turbine pumps, uh, those are the types of places that are gonna have the high pressure pumps. Um, any kind of fluid handling, uh, with fluid transfer, anything that transfers uh, any kind of heat, uh, heated fluid, especially with that low NPSH, uh, that's where we uh, often shine. Uh, with the mixing, uh, one thing I, I am going to uh, point out is if you look at this picture here, you see this tube on top. This is called a quench gland. And what this is, is it's a, it's a special fitting that we made for a customer that has a lip seal on the back of the mechanical seal that puts an oil barrier between the mechanical seal and the outside atmosphere. And that's because the customer is pumping a fluid that is um, uh, that crystallizes when it is exposed to the outside atmosphere. And because it crystallizes when exposed to that outside atmosphere, a lot of times the seals wear out prematurely and the customer was having issues with uh, the pumps wearing out too quickly and the process that they were using it for was in the paper and pulp industry and it would basically shut down their whole operation every time a pump seal wore out and they were wearing out every couple of months instead of uh, going on for years. So we came up with this quench gland uh, with the sight glass in it. And what happens is this uh, quench gland is filled with an oil and the sight glass may, it, uh, makes it so that a maintenance, uh, a maintenance person can go by it on their routine checks and look in the sight glass and they can see uh, if the oil looks like it's gone up or it's gone down or it's turned cloudy that the seal is due for a change and they can uh, they can schedule a proper maintenance rather than having a ca catastrophic failure, and they can properly clean out the system and uh, make sure that everything is has, is stopped properly, and not have uh, this waste of all these um, all, all these dollar amounts of uh, materials uh, gone bad from having a pump failure. So this was a uh, very large success with this uh, company, and it was uh, 
something they're they're pumping in the uh, paper and pulp industry. I, I don't know the name of the chemical, but uh, uh, it's something that crystallizes with outside atmosphere, and this uh, solved it pretty well. Um, so uh, taking a, a look at some of our water and wastewater applications, um, we do have uh, one of our big things in the water and wastewater is uh, the DAF applications, uh, dissolved air flotation. Our pumps, uh, regen turbine pump, as particularly ours, can handle 20% uh, entrained vapor uh, inside the pump, uh, meaning that you can put an inlet on uh, a lot of our pumps. You can either uh, put it, we can either put a tap in the inlet side for you, or you can just put a T on the inlet side yourself, but uh, you can introduce air into the inlet side. And what happens is the air gets mixed up by the impeller vanes uh, and it chops it up into a fine mist. And this mist comes out looking like smoke inside of the water. And what happens is the uh, uh, particles in the water from whatever waste that is in this water. Uh, some of the waste could be uh, in the food industry, uh, particularly in the poultry industry. They use uh, DAF systems a lot to clean out the water enough to be able to uh, put out the, uh, put the water into the regular, um, uh, the regular water uh, disposal system uh, to be able to go into um, the regular wastewater plants rather than uh, putting it into a storage facility to be taken to a, uh, any kind of further rendering. Uh, they can just use a DAF system. Now what this smoke does is it grabs those particles and makes them float to the top where they can be skimmed off. Now there's another use for this outside of the food industry uh, and that is in the uh, gas and oil industry. They use this uh, with the shale and the fracking. And what happens is when they uh, pump all that water into the ground under that high pressure to squeeze all that oil out of the ground, uh, they then later have to remove all that water. Uh, and previous to using the DAF application in the field, they would store all this water as basically as toxic waste. They couldn't do anything with this water except store it as toxic waste because it had so much junk in it, so many, so many particles of oil and, and other uh, chemicals in it that was in the oil uh, that they couldn't do anything with it. Well, then they, they discovered that by using the DAF process that they could uh, they could get all of the not all of, but a good portion of those particles up uh, to the surface and skimming off the top and be able to clean this water enough not to be able to put it down the normal drain system, but to be able to uh, reuse the water for the next site. So at least they're reclaiming the water to be able to use from site to site rather than storing it as toxic waste. So it is reclaiming the water. It's not a perfect solution, but it's a better solution than just storing it as toxic waste. So um, some of our other wastewater applications are uh, when you're in any kind of a wastewater facility that uses any type of a grinder pump or a larger uh, pump, usually the seal uh, that is in that pump and the seal chamber are very expensive to work on. Uh, we typically find uh, a higher pressure MTH pump in, uh, that is running its own line into that seal chamber, and it's usually pumping clean water into the seal chamber, keeping the seal clean and cool uh, outside of what the rest of the pump is doing. And what that does is it extends the life of the uh, larger, more expensive seal uh, so that they're not uh, taking on more maintenance and uh, more expenses than necessary uh, just by using a, a smaller pump to uh, keep the seal chamber clean and clear while the larger pump is doing its job. Um, 
with the filter back flush. Uh, anytime you have a, a filter that's running, after a while the filter gets clogged up. You need a method to be able to clean up that, uh, uh, clean out the filter uh, to keep your operation moving without taking apart the filter. Uh, to change it all the time or to clean it out and put it back in. You can use a regenerative turbine pump to back flush it. Um, many of the same uh, principles apply to using it for extractors. You can, uh, they actually use them in uh, um, uh, marine yards when they're working on the large diesel engines for uh, shipyards. Uh, when they're doing work on engines, they can... Uh, uh, a lot of times they can do uh, fluid changes without um, without stopping the running engines of the larger diesel engines. Uh, with the groundwater remediation, it's very similar to the a filter back flush where they are uh, using the high pressure uh, high pressure pumps to uh, keep the uh, uh, keep the filters. Uh, clean so that they can keep the system moving. Um, one of the other uh, things that we produce, one of the other pumps that we produce is one of our DC um, DC 12 volt washdown pumps uh, we make. It's, uh, we call it our DC 10. Uh, there are a couple other manufacturers that make something called the DC 10 pump as well. Uh, they're made mostly for the portable restroom industry. Uh, but we have found over the years that um, some of our distributors have found other uses for them, uh, including the idea that we can mount our uh, pumps on a pedestal mount. And by mounting it on a pedestal mount, it can be um, used with a hydraulic drive and we have one of our OEMs that use it for uh, pumping DEF, the the, um, the diesel uh, the the diesel exhaust fluid uh, right into the farm vehicles out in the field while they're pump while they're refilling the uh, diesel fuel as well uh, while they're out in the while they're um, while the tractors are out uh, getting refueled. Um, and so we have a customer that uh, does that, uses those on a regular basis. But because we have uh, this 12-volt um, motor secured, we can use it for uh, any one of our centrifugals that can handle up to the one-horsepower motor. Uh, we can also use it for um, several of our T31 series uh, close-coupled regen turbines and our uh, E41 and E51 series up to the one horse uh, one horsepower. Um, so any any kind of truck mounting uh, pump you may be looking for, we can do it uh, both um, with an with a uh, DC volt 12 volt motor, uh, or we can we can offer a uh, pedestal mount uh, for you to hook up with a um, hydraulic drive. Um, Another application um, that we have for one of our OEMs is uh, we use, they use our pumps to pump high pressure coolant onto the cutting tool. And what that does is that allows the cutting tool, uh, when, it's be when it's being used in a CNC machine and it's being cleaned with the high pressure uh, fluid, to act like it's cutting every cut like the first cut. So it can go faster and it can go quicker and it's more uh, higher quality um, uh, when it's cutting uh, because it, what it's doing is it's cleaning that cutting tool and it's cleaning the, tool, uh, cleaning the part that it's cutting at a microscopic level, blowing the chips out of the way faster and um, more effectively than just with the uh, standard uh, fluid that's that would normally just be uh, like a fountain on on the part that's being cut. This would actually be blowing it at extremely high pressure, uh, in some cases up to the uh, uh, thousand psi. Um, 
so um, anywhere that has any any place that you would go to that would manufacture any kind of a tank, valve, pump, or piping would need to have a method to make sure that their piece of equipment does not leak. And we have found over the years that one of the easiest methods of uh, testing for this is, is for hydrostatic testing for this is by uh, hooking up a regen turbine pump uh, on one end of it, uh, plugging up all the holes except one and running a valve with a uh, pressure gauge and just running fluid in it and closing that valve up to whatever PSI you want to run it to. If you want to test it up to 100 PSI, if you want to test it up to 300 PSI, you get the appropriate pump for it. And while you're running it, you can simply uh, have the pump running on a loop and look for your uh, look for any leaks or porosity or whatever you would be checking for and it's a really simple way to do it and it's uh, very cost effective and uh, it's uh, one of those applications that uh, a lot of uh, a lot of a lot of people overlook when they're uh, looking for a method of doing hydrostatic testing on uh, any equipment they may manufacture um, another one of our applications here is um, pressure injection. Um, we do, uh, they use regen turbine pumps for injecting creosote into wood for any kind of outside structure that would be exposed to weather. Um, they also use the high pressure, again, for the spraying, similar to the car washes. Uh, they'll use that for cleaning anything from asphalt to uh, uh, cleaning um, inside of food processing. Um, another application is with uh, misting. Uh, they use that for construction areas where they have to be able to uh, keep keep the um, uh, dust down, especially when you're doing uh, construction around residential uh, areas and uh, you don't want the residents complaining uh, about um, about the uh, uh, pollution in the air. Uh, you would use a high pressure regenerative turbine pump blowing a mist over a high powered fan to be able to uh, put that uh, put that mist. Uh, into the air and it would uh, grab the dust particles and keep it down. Um, and then anywhere you have uh, laboratory equipment um, that would have any kind of evaporation, distillation, um, gel drying or vacuum ovens are going to use uh, pumping equipment. Usually that's some of our smaller pumps. Um, and uh, anything that needs a high pressure pump, uh, that's places to look. Um, sampling pumps, uh, similar to the uh, geothermal heating and cooling, when you've got um, a facility that is uh, running fluid throughout the facility, uh, especially if it's a uh, water or wastewater where it's uh, cleaning the fluid, um, and you need to draw samples from different points, you can have a circulation line with uh, twists and turns and bends in it, and you can use a regenerative turbine pump to be circulating that that uh, that line uh, because uh, regenerative turbine pump can overcome the uh, pressures that are lost in the friction losses from those lines. Um, most of our uh, typical Materials of construction are bronze fitted, all iron, all bronze, and 316 stainless steel. And along with that, we have a number of um, O ring materials, including EPR, neoprene, Teflon, and a number of uh, mechanical seal configurations. Um, and I am going to let anybody who wants to have a copy of this presentation when we're done, because we're just about finished here, um, have it. Uh, so if you just email me, I'll 
just go ahead and send it right to you. Um, this is some of our inside contacts, uh, which will also be on this uh, as one of the slides on here, so you'll have the inside contacts if you don't already have it. Um, here is uh, just to give you guys a glimpse of some of the stuff coming up here. This is uh, something that we're hoping to come up with or come out with in the next uh, year or so. Brand new uh, product is uh, MTH is working on a mag drive assembly. I know uh, for years we've had a number of people asking for it, and so um, it's a concept that we're working on right now. I uh, just wanted to share that with you. Scott, I'm not seeing that. Nope, this is uh, something we've been working on. That's uh, brand new, and um, hopefully we'll have it within the next uh, six months or so. We'll see. But uh, the drawings are floating around. <laughs> um. And another one coming uh, this month, um, we will have a brand new, I've been working on it pretty diligently, brand new website. So uh, the last up, the last major update to our website was uh, I believe 2005 and it has been uh, updated as needed uh, every chance that, that I get, but we haven't had a major uh, interface uh, change to it since then, and so this will be uh, the first major, major interface change to it since 2005, and uh, it will be completely scalable, so it will work uh, with cell phones and uh, across multiple platforms. Uh, and uh, so I'm pretty excited about this. I've been working on it for uh, several weeks now. Um, and that's uh, and that's about uh, all I have to share with you. Uh, these are just some of our more interesting applications that we've had. Um, you know, we make a pump that goes on, that dangles off of a helicopter. Um, I believe it dangles 30 feet off of a helicopter and can fill up uh, 500 gallons in 30 seconds uh, from a lake to be able to dump over a forest fire. Uh, more recently, we uh, supplied some uh, pumps to NASA where uh, they were uh, recirculating uh, refrigerant or they were circulating refrigerant up until launch. And then when the rocket launched, it just burnt up everything that was on the pad, pumps and all. But they did their job up until it circulated, so that's what they were meant to do. Um, and then oh, another use for the, the, the DAF that uh, we're getting into, or we were getting into, I don't know where they're at with it, is one of our OEMs is using them for um, a dog wash that is doing the uh, dissolved air flotation where they're uh, introducing the micro bubbles into the skin of the dogs for um, being able to uh, help alleviate um, certain skin conditions on the animals. Um, and then of course we always have uh, different kinds of applications that the military uses but we're pretty proud of uh, one of the big ones that we use is, uh, uh, I forget the name of the, the phalanx missile system. We're on the, the, the we, we, we make the pump that uh, controls the uh, cooling for the main guidance system for that. So we're pretty proud of that. So other than that, um, does anybody have any questions, comments? Anything they'd like to know? Okay, well. 
Scott, I think you've done a good job here. I appreciate it. Okay. Uh, well, I really appreciate everybody taking your afternoon and spending an hour with me to to go over this and I hope I gave you guys some insight as to where you can use some of our products. And uh, I think everybody has my email. If uh, anybody has any questions, please feel free to uh, uh, feel free to email me or, or give me a call um, at my desk here, and I'll be happy to help you. Um, and with that, I really I thank you very much for being here this afternoon, and I look forward to uh, working with you in the future. Thank you, Scott. All right. Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye.